Hello everyone, uh, my name is Gustavo Saposnik. I'm the editor-in-chief of the World Stroke Academy for the World Stroke Organization. And today we have the privilege to having uh, Dr. Professor uh, Bernard Young and uh, as well as Dr. Uh, Urs Fischer. Uh, both were uh, authors of two very exciting articles about the role of combination therapy of uh, uh, intra vascular uh, trom uh, thrombectomy and as well as from mechanical thrombectomy and uh, uh, thrombolytic therapy. So uh, let's get started with uh, Professor uh, Bernard Young. As you know, uh, he's an internationally renowned academic professor of neurology at the University of Melbourne. He's the president of the Stroke Society of uh, Australasia, as well as the uh, uh, one of the um, forthcoming uh, uh, researchers uh, in uh, Australasia. So uh, he's practicing as a neurologist as well as an endovascular interventionist at the uh, uh, Royal Melbourne uh, Hospital. So he's the uh, uh, first or co-first author with Dr. Peter Mitchell about the uh, uh, safe uh, direct uh, uh, study. So welcome, uh, uh, Bernard, and thank you for joining us this uh, uh, today. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Spostik. Delighted to be here, very delighted. Excellent, thank you. So uh, the intention is to hear, essentially to learn from your vision. And, you know, we have some uh, specific questions about, so you show us the benefit of mechanical thrombectomy uh, combined with uh, uh, thrombolytic therapy, so bridging therapy over uh, mechanical thrombectomy. So the question, you know, that people may know, may, may ask, is what is the state of art today for a stroke patient presenting with, with a, uh, a LVO uh, within and beyond four hours and a half? So this is bear in mind that, you know, the initial trials, the depth uh, uh, trial and the skip trial didn't show any significant benefit of uh, uh, having or there were non-inferiority, uh, uh, non-inferior studies show, uh, to, to reflect on the uh, potential benefit of uh, mechanical thrombectomy alone. So what's the state of art today based on the result of your and um, Earth Fisher publication of with Swift Direct? So thank you, Gustavo, for the question. First, I would like to thank my dear colleague, Peter Mitchell, uh, my co-first author for Direct Safe, and we've worked uh, many years on this, and we're great, very grateful to, to Peter. I would like to provide a bit of context in terms of why we set out to do this study in order to answer your question about what the state of the art is. Now, the... Uh, the rationale for studying this question of direct thrombectomy starts from 2015 after the foundational studies showing that within the window where patients are eligible for intravenous thrombolytics, the bridging therapy, which is intravenous thrombolytics with thrombectomy, was superior to intravenous thrombolytics alone. However, over the years to come, both the neurointerventional community and also clinical neurologists were, uh, some of them were quite keen to skip intravenous thrombolytics for two reasons. One is that uh, we're finding uh, cases after intravenous thrombolytics of patients experiencing uh, clot migration and clot migration, the consequences of which would be that these clots may be uh, inaccessible by our devices. So the second uh, reason was that in patients that came in with a large predicted ischemic core, either by CT perfusion or by MR perfusion, these cases in some registries, uh, there was a, a higher risk for symptomatic intracerebral hemorrhage. And, and so for that reason, uh, the, the people who would like to skip thrombolytics, we call them the skippers, uh, was on one side. On the other hand, we also have cases where intravenous thrombolytics should not be skipped, and especially those who are transferred from other centers, uh, what we call hub and spoke uh, model, uh, those patients who are from spoke come into a hub, and there will be inevitable delay to getting into an angiography suite, 
So intravenous thrombolytics is a nice bridge. And the second reason for not skipping intravenous thrombolytics was that there were truly cases of a very, very tortuous uh, access arteries and either internal carotid artery or, uh, or, the, or the access through it uh, from the aortic arch. And, and these may not be possible uh, for us to, uh, to intervene. And in, in so the patient was, would have missed a chance for, um, for, a, uh, for a positive result from intravenous thrombolytics. So we clearly had equipoise. And it was at that time that six groups around the world decided to do their own study. And, and um, the, the Chinese groups were very successful. So direct MT and DEVT were the first off the bat. And they showed, demonstrated non-inferiority. And then followed by SKIP, there was a Japanese study. They were not able to show non-inferiority. Now, the fourth study was quite interesting. So Mr. Clean OIV was designed as a superiority study, not non-inferior. And they did not demonstrate superiority. Now, then the, the last two studies were, and you will hear about it later from Urs Fischer, is, um, uh, is Swift Direct, and also our study Direct Safe, where uh, our two studies were not able to show non-inferiority. Now, it's, in terms of the state of the art, I think it comes to the point where <clears throat> we, we I, I believe, and also we believe that we have uh, got the last two pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. And I believe now, and I don't think there will be any more motivation and will to do further studies on this topic, that the gold standard now should be bridging therapy. Thank you, Werner, very insightful, uh, you know, introduction and comment. Uh, so, uh, so, what's, uh, so this is very clear, you know, your response for those within four hours and a half. So uh, uh, in the anterior circulation, again, beyond four hours and a half, what do you usually do? So imagine that somebody present with, you know, from lasting normal or lasting well, you know, six to eight hours. So uh, what's, the, what's the state of the art? What do you usually do? I'm not talking about 12 or beyond, anyway. Yeah, this is truly peering into the, the next frontier. Now, in terms of extending the time window for intravenous thrombolytics, we will put uh, thrombectomy aside. For intravenous thrombolytics, we already have the positive results from extend IV. So that showed that from four and a half hours to nine hours, and also uh, this included, included also wake up strokes. And also the wake up study also showed that you could use advanced imaging to select those patients who best benefit from uh, intravenous thrombolysis. Now beyond nine hours, that really is the, uh, <laughs> the, next, the next gap. And there are quite a few studies who are in that, um, in that space. So in Australia, Mark Pass is running Eternal. And in North America, there's also Timeless and, and so forth. And look, this, this is truly very exciting. And, and we don't have the answer yet. On the other hand, for uh, thrombectomy, beyond four, four and a half hours, we already have the two studies, Diffuse and Dawn, showing us the way that we can extend all the way to 24 hours in those patients with favorable penumbra. Excellent. So thank you for your insightful uh, you know, answer. And and uh, and again, uh, uh, Bernard, uh, how how about you know uh, uh, in the posterior circulation? So how about you know rather than anterior, where we have the most evidence in the in the basilar artery system? Let's say basilar artery thrombosis. Yeah. So for that balance on thrombus, we uh, our study is the the only one out of the the six to have included basilar occlusions. And we find that uh, maybe it is, uh, it is a very timely to know that the two studies from China recently just got published showing superiority of thrombectomy over best medical therapy in those patients with basal artery thrombosis. So I would think at this stage, if the patient was within four and a half hours, they should have uh, bridging therapy for basal artery thrombosis. Okay, thank you. That's uh, great. And in terms of a standard of care, you know, in your institution or in Australia, 
Do you uh, give thrombolytic therapy for people beyond four hours and a half, and let's say four hours and a half and nine hours? No, we do, we do. So uh, it's the extent uh, came from Australia, so we're pretty proud of it. Of course. So from four and a half hours to nine hours, if these patients demonstrate an advanced imaging CD perfusion, a favorable penumbra, we would be fairly comfortable in giving these patients intravenous thrombolytics first, and especially if they come from a different center, and that's going to be some time delay. Excellent. With or without MRI? So are you ordering an MRI prior to or not? Uh, we are we're very big on CT perfusion. So, and also our training sites, the, because we have a hub and spoke model here in, uh, in Victoria, and we have two uh, statewide centers, a Royal Melbourne Hospital and also Monash Medical Center. And our uh, spoke sites, uh, those who uh, drain to our center are equipped with CT perfusion. Okay, that's uh, that's fantastic. So now uh, uh, the final question is uh, mostly about your vision. So it took us essentially like 15 years or so to demonstrate the benefits of uh, mechanical thrombectomy. Now we have, like you mentioned, six trials comparing you know, bridging therapy versus mechanical thrombectomy alone. So do you need uh, any more trial about that, number one? And where do you see the uh, uh, the field moving forward? Yeah, well, thank you for that question. So the the six, uh, uh, the six studies and the co-PIs of the six studies have gotten together and we formed a group called IRIS and we have pooled uh, all the data together. So this is IPD, individual patient data meta-analysis, which will give us more precision to answer some of these uh, questions about subgroups. Uh, that aside, I think the I think the world has has moved on. I don't think we need any more direct thrombectomy studies. Rather, the next frontier is to get into distal arterial occlusion. And this is a plug for my next study. Uh, called Frontier AP. AP is Asia Pacific. And we're going to target the distal uh, MCA M2 and M3s and also the A2s and A3s. Uh, this is a study headed by the usual suspects, uh, Peter Mitchell, myself, Henry Ma, and Tan. And this is one of uh, a few other studies uh, asking this question. There's also MEVO escape and uh, discount and distal from uh, Switzerland. And I think that's a good thing because having a few studies will allow us to have more power to actually change guidelines and move the needle. I think having a single study is not enough. Thank you. And by the way, you know, you mentioned about the, you know, showing a patient level data analysis. You probably are aware of the meta-analysis done published in March in neurology, showing a benefit of mechanical bridging therapy, uh, a meta-analysis from Fernando Testa and uh, um, uh, also uh, Jose Biller and showing a 25% increased odds of the benefit of mechanical thrombectomy and, and endovascular thrombectomy bridge, uh, uh, bridge therapy compared to mechanical thrombectomy alone. Anyway, yeah. so this is I, going in the right direction. Yeah, look, I, I applaud the efforts of study level meta-analyses and I've counted, um, my last count was 11. There are actually 11 out there. Oh, uh, wow. Using, <laughs> using the, the summary results of the six studies. But what I would uh, implore uh, is, is to wait for the study, the individual patient data yeah, yeah. level data analyses, yeah. which will be, um, we, we're working very hard and we are looking to publicize that at the next World Stroke Congress in Singapore in October. Excellent. No, this is fantastic work, and I look forward to, to, and I think that we are all looking forward to see the result, especially for the adjustment. Very important to, you know, in patient, having the opportunity to having, you know, patient level data to make a, a subgroup analysis or adjust for different important confound, confounders. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 Bernard, it was a privilege for the World Stroke Academy and for the World Stroke Organization to having you. And congratulations again for the hard work and the publication in Lancet. Very impressive.
Congrats. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Excellent. All the best and uh, see you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye bye.